and welcome to Improvisations on Growth with Medu Ein Siedler, Business and Life Coach. My name is Adina Ahiri, Madhu's discussion companion, this time introducing to you the topic of survival. In what sense, you might ask? As we take a step back and observe our survival behaviors, we may notice how these days haven't changed much since the time we as humans or hominids were chasing mammoths. Have you noticed how the survival instinct is still driving our workplace behavior and leadership? If we still need to survive these days, then who are our enemies? Listen to this first episode and see what opens up for you. I want to jump in our topic today, and um, it's building or branching out, depends how you want to see it, on the previous um, podcasts we've done. Uh, the one on true innovation or what we call true innovation and our listeners can go back and uh, check them out. I think it's time we visit what does it mean instinct of survival in the 21st century and especially in a challenging year like this. And I wanted to start from the professional leader perspective for someone who, who's in a workplace And why am I bringing this up and what direction am I trying to go is in the sense of has our survival instinct changed at all since like hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago, or are we still so caught up and it's still embedded in us that involuntarily we're we're bringing it into the workplace? And why am I saying this is because we've been talking about people are still trying to be better than other people, right? People are still trying to perform better in the workplace, to get noticed, to stand out, to, and for me, this is part of that survival of like making it, of succeeding, of catching the beast, killing the mammoth, that kind of behavior that involuntarily we still succumb to. So this also made me think of, of enemies in a way, if we always have to be better than someone else, then what happens to the other person? Is that person our enemy? So speaking of this, who do you think are our enemies today? And what do you think our survival instincts are these days in a, in a workplace? How, how are we manifesting those and can we change that? So as always, I love your questions (laughs) and they're opening up (laughs) like a huge universe of, of topics. And funnily enough, just, just yesterday um, I, I was conducting a workshop and it was about, it was about survival. So yeah, maybe you were like the fly on the wall and you heard that. (laughs) Maybe, maybe, who knows? (laughs) The vibes came over from I, Austria to, to, to Florida. Yes, the survival instinct is part of who we are as human beings. So it is, it is located in part of our brain. And every time we are under stress and every time the cortisol level goes up, the, the adrenaline rushes through our body we kind of switch and it's not a conscious choice. We switch into our survival mode. The survival mode has four different expressions. So it's the fight, it's the flight, it's the uh, petrifying, or it's the diversion. Most of the people out there not knowing it are in a survival mode. So the survival mode kicks in in the moment where I don't feel safe on either a physical level or a psychological level. I understand that for thousands of years, our ancestors, they have been like on edge, so to speak, right? Threats from everywhere, really tough to find food and so on. What I am looking at is that we're in the 21st century. And for most of us, there are no tigers. And even an extreme situation, 
is it really extreme? Is this survival um, mode that gives us so much anxiety, could it be a little bit of an illusion too? We're hanging on to it so we can feel safe, ironically. Because that's what well, we I, know. That's how we're used to. Well, I, I think that we have created an environment that constantly pushes our survival buttons. How come? What do you mean? When the stress level goes up in our body physically, the survival mode kicks in. So we have a lot of stress in our, in, in our business environment. So a, a lot of people out there in the business world are in survival mode, although it, it would not be necessary. But just by creating stress and deadlines and pressure, you now need to make double the PL that, that you made like last quarter or last year. That, that stress automatically pushes us into survival mode. And it would just not be necessary because our survival does not depend on it objectively. So this is what I this is what actually made me choose this topic too. Since it's not life threatening, why do we keep on calling it survive mode? What is it? How would you call it? The wording just means that our body goes into a really ancient mechanism and this mechanism is, is kind of carved into our system and it just switches on because that's where it comes from and so it still has the name i i understand if we were to give it another name how would you call it since it's not necessarily life-threatening do you think that there should be some awareness of this happening and what would that awareness bring as for when I understood, well, why are we calling it su still survival mode? Although we are not really threatened, our survival is not really threatened because a lot of people feel threatened and it feels existential to them. The one thing is like the so-called factual or objective circumstances where we could argue that the life our physical life is not really threatened and also our psychological health is not threatened. Yet what really counts is the feeling that people have. And for a lot of people, it does feel existential. In a certain sense, the word is still valid because to a lot of people, it does feel existential. Like a friend of ours, a CFO in like an international corporation. And he worked there like for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And every time we met him, he was like, yeah, I'm existentially so, so not secure. You know, he, he, he felt existentially threatened by this totally fictional idea that they would let go of him. And even if they would have let go of him, you know, he, he really earned a lot of money and money was definitely the least of his problems. But his inner feeling was so real and so true that he was just constantly anxious in, in, in his, his whole mind, heart, soul, body system was just constantly in, in a survival mode. Thank you for listening. We trust that our conversation on survival has prompted insightful discussions within yourself or questions about the illusion of a need to survive in today's world. A need perhaps cultivated by the corporate world, still geared at pressuring employees to perform instead of create. Do you think that being better and outperforming seems to drive us more than co-creating and cooperating? How does that connect to our mental health? Feel free to share your thoughts and questions with Madhu directly by emailing her at madhu at or engage with her on her social media on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. And remember to listen to our following episode.